Brighton's finest. Juice. But I, I was, love Brighton, man. Yeah. I'm it's so a shame jealous. Shame you're not coming down. Yeah, we, we've done it. We did it last time. I don't know why we're not doing it this time. It's like we're just doing like a shorter run because next year we'll just be pretty much all of Europe and all of the UK all the time, I think. So, mm. I don't know. Cool. I love Brighton. Though. It's such a good place. Yeah. So I'm probably my favorite place in the UK, honestly. Oh. I don't know. Because uh, I like the coastline, but I... No, no, honestly, because <laughs> I like the coastline, but I, I, I've, like, I've trouble with, like, tons and tons of people all the time, and I've spent most of my life living in cities with four and a half, five million plus people in them, so... Yeah. Right, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's coastal, and it's pretty, and it's got, like, that whole, like, um, it still feels, uh, like, turn of the century to me, which mm. I really love. Yeah. So, so, this tour is going to take you on your biggest UK date so far. How does it feel to be reaching so much of the UK as well as Oz? Because your, your album's number one in Australia, right? Yeah, yeah, it was number one and it's been in the top ten for a while, I think. I, I haven't really kept track. <laughs> <laughs> um, how does it feel? I don't know. I think I'm dealing with a complex right now, a complex that was quite averse to success because I always imagined myself as kind of like this brown... Um, poor working class kid playing in hardcore punk bands the rest of my life so the fact that like there's a semblance of success that sort of following me um, is a little bit alienating sometimes maybe I'm just not great at um, dealing with it maybe it's not the kind of success that I wanted I don't know but it's it's like I have mixed feelings about it but how does it feel doing the biggest UK day it's also kind of awesome do you treat that kind of dealing with success in this album or is it going to be more maybe something for the next album I don't know Next album might have something to do with me having kids and a family. I, I don't really know what the next album's going to look like, per se, thematically. I think the notion of dealing with success has always been kind of like, um, for me, something predicated on fear and the fears of what that looks like. I think there's probably a little bit of that in Go Father and Lightness, but I think it's more, more trying to deal with the notion of becoming like a person again, becoming a human being after a pretty traumatic early 20s. Um, and trying to wrestle with these... Um, you know, grander ideas in a way that sounds, you know, distinctly me, which is, you know, long-winded and conceptual and perhaps overly literate. So you've always used music to help you with your personal life. Where is this album different to the positions in terms of how you used it for yourself, what you got out of it personally writing the album? The positions felt like a catharsis and a release and an unleashing of, of, of terror and doubt and there was a, I think for me a resignation to the fatalism of my predicament if that makes sense there was a resignation to the fates I think I was sort of resigned to the reality of my situation but I was still trying to buck against it like some you know like some bull in a parade you know what I mean mm -hmm. whereas Go Father and Lightness is distinctly centered around the notion of hope like there's a sense of faith in the process of living um, as opposed to rebellion against it you know I don't think I'm fatalistic in Go Father and Lightness and I think what I got from this was a sense of new purpose a sense of new I don't know a sense of perhaps a broader creative vision a more more cohesive and coherent creative vision perhaps uh, and I think at the end of it I found a version of myself which I could live with whereas at the end of the positions I found myself broken and empty and null and kind of like kind of numb. The Father and Lightness is like I said in like I think probably like a dozen stupid publicity statements or whatever PR statements. It's like I, it was like my healing album, and I think I found some healing. I think I found some some remuneration almost on an emotional level. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you've said it's about um, among other things, it's about being a real life human being. Yeah. What what is a human being? In your head? In my head. A human being is, I mean, I think we think, we always think about the word human, we never really think about being. You know, um, like Descartes said, cook it as a, a, a sum, you know, which is, you know, we always think about what it is to think, but we never think about what it is to be. You know, I am. What is I? Am, what is am? What is being? You know, so I always think that when we use the word human being, I think we need to recognize what being is. And for me, it's a combination of all our joys, sorrows, and experiences, our sensory, um, our sensory experiences and our emotional experiences, the things that feel spiritual and the things that ring true as physical. 
to be human is to run the whole gamut of emotions and sometimes feel not at all. I mean, it's it's the all-encompassing experience of being, you know, Martin Heidegger calls it das Sein, being there, you know. And I think that is kind of what I'm trying to look at. You know, the full gamut of human experiences that I that I sort of endured and only loosely triumphed over in the course of two and a half two years or whatever after the positions came out. And I think there's a sense of exploring and searching that I engaged in uh, that I'd never done before. You know, and it probably sounds like this really pretentious quarter life, but I think there was power in it for me to look at, you know, like I said, the joys and the sorrows of, of being alive, of, of being. Is there any one song on the album that really encapsulates that? So yes, the life, I think, is probably the one that embodies um, the solutions to the questions I'm asking in the first song, which is Fear and Trembling. Um, and I think, I think Say Yes to Life probably embodies a lot of the spirit of the record, and I think the other ones would be um, uh, The Deeper Size of Frank's Shadows or, or Persevere. Okay, uh, final question. You talked about the new sincere movement, uh, musicians, or the way I interpret it, musicians kind of taking more responsibility and uh, writing about things which are actually meaningful again. Is yeah. that something that you have perceived in music in general, or are you talking in relation to the Australian scene? Just, I wonder if you share your thoughts. The thing has happened to guitar music and music all about is that we're becoming more predicated on things that are market-driven, things that are like culturally accepted as cool. We become more into hip anyway. Or we take things that are actually meaningful. We take social movements. We take important things like feminism and LGBT rights, and we we mangle them um, to suit the machinery of capitalism and we end up cynically trying to market those to people so that we can sell more instead of actually like taking upon our, ourselves the mental of meaningfulness. And I think that's kind of what's happened. And I think what I'm trying to do is act as a part of my soul that, you know, was like set on fire by the hardcore punk movement in Sydney and, you know, try to make something that's meaningful and authentic to myself for the sake of it just being meaningful uh, and actually, you know, potentially helping alleviate the suffering in people, you know, giving someone a soundtrack to the hard parts of their life and the joys of their life, you know. And I think there's something that's been missing in that regard because, you know, indie rock went from, you know, we want to be the biggest rock band in the world, we're super cool, we smoke cigarettes and hand in Manhattan, to this cynical, horn-ringed internet nonsense that's, you know, kind of like pervading indie rock consciousness. And I think we're going to really sue either very well. You know, we're looking for something that's more about matters of the heart. Bryson's finest. Juice.